Brother Robert and our choir, they did a great job this morning in our cantata. That was a blessed time this morning. And um, if you have your Bibles, I ask you to turn to Numbers chapter 13. The title of this is The Value of Faith. You know, sometimes faith is overlooked. Sometimes faith is undervalued. And one of the things I noticed as I was studying this this week was just how much faith affects the things around us. It affects our lives. It affects the other lives around us. When you use faith the way it should be used. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just come to you right now and I ask for your help. I ask, Father, that no one see or hear me, but they see and hear you, Lord. That, Father, that you would teach us the importance of faith when it comes to our everyday life or when it comes to actual situations and obstacles that we stand at. That, Father, the faith in which we put in you, Lord, is what can change the things around us. And, Father, where we've had very little faith, I ask you to forgive us. Change us, Lord, to be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. In Numbers, chapter 13, our key verse here is verse 30. And it says, But Caleb quietened the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it. For we are all able to overcome it. One of the things in which had taken place is Moses had sent out 12 men to look at the land there in Canaan. And then they they were to report to the Israelites who were encamping there in the wilderness outside of this land in which the Lord had promised them. And ten of the twelve came back and said that it was too difficult to conquer. Ten of them said that there's no way that we could do this. But there were two. Joshua and Caleb, of the twelve, they gave a different report. They believed that God of Israel could conquer the land. And the other ten didn't believe God could. So you have conflicting reports here. And you have conflicting statements. And our verse, the great statement of faith was by Caleb. In verse 30, you can see the faith in which Caleb had when he knew even the reports of the ten were being said. It shows four important things about faith in this one verse. What are some obstacles that you're facing today? What are some obstacles that are standing in your way? Maybe we need a little bit of faith. The first point dealing with faith is faith brings peace. You notice here in this verse, it says, Caleb quieted the people. He was asking them to calm down and relax. Because the ten that had come and gave this report, they had stirred them up. And Caleb was like, look, calm down. Why did they need to be quiet? Why did they need to be calmed down just for a minute? Because the report of the unbelief of the ten was the things in which was affecting them. It was putting fear in their heart, and it was putting doubt in where they had left in Egypt, all the obstacles in which they had faced. And these ten people are telling them, we cannot take this land, it cannot be done. But Caleb gave a report of faith, and it calmed their soul. He said, y'all just calm down a second, listen. 
The God in whom delivered us out of Egypt. The God in whom did all these different things for us. That same God will give us the ability to conquer this land. Faith always does that. When there are situations in my life, and there are situations in my life right now, that there's uneasiness, stress, and one of the things I know that lack when that becomes great inside of me is when my faith is becoming weak. When my faith is becoming little. When I take my eyes off the faith that I need that God will prevail through those situations. But if you notice in this verse, Caleb calmed them down. And how did he calm them down? Because he was speaking of faith. Faith quiets a troubled heart. And faith brings peace. The greatest peace is with God through Jesus Christ. When we're at our moments of, the great, of storms in our life, where we're needing that faith and where the waves are crashing in around us, when it looks like we can't take that land, one of the things we need is that faith. Our second point here with the faith. The faith produced passion. Caleb said, let us go at once and possess the land. If you notice those two words, at once, that speaks of zeal, of passion to God's calling. God had called them and told them to go get that land. And Caleb knew it. He had his faith. He had his trust in God. He wasn't scared. He wasn't fearful. And when you look at this verse, it is telling them, go at once without hesitation. Caleb didn't want to procrastinate. He didn't want to wait because he knew the Lord's time was now. He knew it wasn't later. He knew it was now. And he knew if they waited, the blessing of the Lord would be removed from them. Because what happens in our lives when the Lord tells us to do something and we are found disobedient? We lose the blessing. We lose what the Lord wants to give us. And the blessing was the promised land. But they were found at a moment of disobedient. And they lost the blessing. He wanted to be prompt in possessing the land. Because he knew hesitation was disobedience. Faith stirs the heart to get to moving for God. When we have the faith in which God wants us to have, You can't sit still. There have been times in my life where huge obstacles stood before me. And it would make me want to hesitate and make me not to want to go and do it. And I would get still and I would say, Lord, are you sure about this? He'd say, yeah, Wes, do it. Are you really sure about this? Yes, Wes, do it. I'd say, say, God, do you see how big this is? And he'd say, do you see how big I am? Okay, God. And God, each time I would ask him and I'd question him when he was wanting me to do something, he was reassuring my faith. He would reassure my faith each and every time, I got this, just do it. Now, when my faith gets weak and my faith gets low, Sometimes my faith may not even be there in tackling an obstacle. He has to let me get to a point of saying, I got this. And the moment I know he has it is the moment I can step out and I can go. And it will stir my heart and emotions and my faith to the point that you can go. The ones of you in which have had children or have worked with little kids, 
You can be down here and a child can be up there and you can say, jump, I'll catch you. And a child might, are you really going to catch me? Are you really going to catch me? But the moment when that child finally falls into your hands and you catch them is the moment when that child fully trusts you and it's they have that woo and you catch them. And when you catch them, you reassure that faith they have in you in catching them. Well, guess what? That's the same way with the Lord. Sometimes we're standing at the edge of things in life. And as we're standing there, he's saying, jump, go, do it. And you're like, God, really? You're going to catch me? But the moment our hearts get stirred enough with faith to come off the cliff is the moment he goes, gotcha. And that's what he had already told Caleb. In Caleb's heart, he said, just go ahead. Come on, do it. I will get you. But unbelief will kill the zeal for the Lord. It will kill the passion you have for the Lord. The times of my life when my faith is real low and real weak, my zeal, my passion for the Lord isn't as strong as it needs to be. Because guess what? Satan is winning the battle inside of me. I'm letting Satan rob me of what the Lord wants to give me. Same thing with you. When you're losing your zeal and losing your passion for the Lord, it's a moment when your faith is getting weak. But faith, when you're acting upon it, when you're moving upon it, is passion. And those of the Israelites who lacked faith, they didn't want to move forward. Those ten in which came back and said, we can't do it. They lacked the faith. And they said, we don't want to move forward. We want to stay where we're at. And Caleb was like, that's not of, the God, not of God. That is not what the Lord has told us to do. But those ten, because of their lack of faith, caused them all to miss their blessing. But the two men of faith, they did all they could to prevent the disobedience. But the disobedience still happened. Our third point about faith. Faith provides possession. If the Israelites had acted on their faith, If they had responded and done what they were supposed to do, Caleb said they could occupy it in that verse. He says, if we will go and do this, we will occupy it. For them to occupy it means they got to go in there and wipe those people out, push them away, and let them know this is our land now. This is our home. This is ours. No longer yours. For them to go in and occupy it. Do you see how if they would have had that kind of faith, that faith would have caused them to have possession of that land. And what was the land? It was several things. Several of the men brought back clusters of grapes so big it took two men to carry it. In Numbers 13, 23, it talks about that. It talks about the grapes were so large it took two men to carry them. That's what the land possessed. Those are the blessings in which the Lord had promised them and was wanting to give them. Faith gives us good possessions. But unbelief provides the lack of that. And they lived in the wilderness for 40 years. Because of their unbelief, 
It provided them to live in the wilderness and wander around for 40 years until they all died off, until there rose up a younger group of them that had the faith and the trust in the Lord to go and occupy the land. Do you see the difference? Do you see in what took place there? If they would have had the faith to go get it, they could have had it. But instead, their lack of faith, it caused them, instead of possessing a land that had grapes so large that two men would have to carry the grapes, their lack of faith gave them the wilderness for 40 years. Faith will possess heaven, but unbelief will lose it all in hell. Where are you at? Where's your faith level? Where's your trust in the Lord? Is your faith so strong that it's all stored there in heaven? Or have you not put any faith and trust in the Lord? It's all lost to hell. Our fourth point about faith. Faith gives power. Caleb said that the Israelites were well able to possess the land. He says there in that verse, well able is the strength that comes by faith. He's telling them, you have the strength. You have the ability. We have the numbers. We have it. Because there in that verse he shows well able to do this. That makes us conquerors. Caleb was trying to tell them. Instead of the one that is conquered. The ten came back and reported and made them be. They were no longer conquerors. Now they were conquered. Because of their lack of faith. And their lack of trust in the Lord. Faith taps the power of God and the walk in the strength of God. When our faith is truly tapped into God, our walk is right with God. You can see it in the strength and the things in which the Lord is doing in our life. Unbelief, however, makes us weak and unable to do much of anything for God. You know, one of the things that I enjoy about doing messages in series instead of just This, that, and this. We're working through the book of Numbers right now, and this is the next one in line. And our church is standing at a crossroads Sunday. We have four men that we're going to elect one of them to be our deacon. And our church has bylaws, and when you look at those bylaws, it shows in the Bible, it brings what the Bible talks about what a deacon should be and do. And then our bylaws talk about the structure of our church and stuff. It never needs to be a political thing. It never needs to be a popularity thing. It needs to be a God thing. A deacon is a servant. And we got to have faith. I didn't pick this message. This is what the Lord led us to next. And it happened to fall the Sunday night before our church. And our Sunday night group is our core group of our church. We've got to have faith that God puts the man that he wants to be there for the next few years as one of our deacons. And the coming years, we look at the structure of our deacon body. And if we need to adjust things, we will. But here's the thing. Where's your faith? That God will put the right person that needs to be the servant there. I got to have the faith. I got to have the trust. 
you got to have the faith and you got to have the trust. What about with work? Where's your faith and trust with the Lord? That He will give you opportunities to share the love of Christ with people there. You say, well, you just don't know. You don't know the people I work with. Or you just, no. You know what? It may just need to be a smile. It may be a pat on the back. It may be a, I'm praying for you. It may be you just praying and not them even knowing that you're praying for them. There are times that I know when people are just praying about coworkers. And the next thing they know, God is setting up a divine appointment for them to share the love of Christ with them. But it all starts with faith about that divine appointment to get to minister to a coworker. What about family? Let's get real personal. What about some of those family members that are hard to love? Or maybe some family members that are lost as last year's Easter egg. When was the last time you truly prayed for them? You cried out to the name of God and brought their name before God Almighty. And you had the faith of Caleb that that land could be yours that their life could be in heaven if they are lost. Or if you know you have a broken relationship with them, that you prayed to God, that same God that wanted those Israelites to take those giants over there, that same God, if you started praying to Him and to mend that relationship with family. You see, from the situation with our deacons, to the situation with coworkers, to the situation with family. It could even be just friends. It's all got to start with faith. And it's all got to start with taking it to the throne room of heaven. Anything less, you miss it. Anything less, you too short. It's all got to come down from God Almighty. That's where it's got to come from. Where's your faith? Where's your trust? I can't do it for you. You can't do it for me. I can't do it for Jennifer and she can't do it for me. I can't do it for my children and they can't do it for me. I can only do it for myself. To trust Him alone. You can only do it for yourself in trusting Him alone. Let's pray. Father, there are so many obstacles in which we are faced with each and every day. And those obstacles rob us of our faith. They rob us of the value of faith. And we take for granted our faith. But Father, where our faith is weak, I ask you to make it strong. Where we're hurting, I ask you to heal us. Where we're broken, Father, I ask you to restore us. Father, put the love back into our hearts. Put the love into our fellowship. Put the love of your passion and your zeal back into our lives, Father. Father, where we have been found disobedient, where we have allowed sin and disobedience to come into our lives, I ask you to forgive us, Lord. I ask you to restore us to you, Father. I ask you, Father, to wipe it away as far as the east is from the west. I ask you for a time of refreshing upon each and every one of us. I ask for a time of refreshing for Calvary Baptist Church. Father, restore to us the love and the joy of our salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. I ask you to stand for our time of invitation.